Cairo International Airport. One of the busiest in Africa and as vibrant as the traffic in the city behind. Hitting around 17 million passengers in 2019, the airport is eager to grow even further in the coming years. Today, I'll be flying Etihad Airways in the 787 business class back to Abu Dhabi. Enjoy! Etihad has three daily services between Abu Dhabi and Cairo, and at the time, only one was served by a long-haul aircraft that features live flat seats, making the three-hour journey much more comfortable than in the A321s, which offer wide recliners instead. Initially, I was planning to connect from Luxor to Abu Dhabi on the same day, but as Egypt Air frequently did during Covid, they cancelled my flight the day before in favour of a higher occupancy. And my only choice of making it to Cairo in time was to leave Hilton Luxor early and spend an unplanned extra night in Cairo. Funny enough, this night would have been my 100th night at Hilton in 2021. Not bad for the middle of June. On top of that, I also had to accept to pay a premium for a seat in business class as I was out of luck and economy was already booked out entirely due to so many passengers being rebooked onto other connections. For this one hour journey, I probably won't purchase an upgrade again in the future unless it's another aircraft with a more comfortable seating pattern, as Egypt Air's A220s don't offer a free middle seat or at least some extra seat width. Having arrived around 9pm, I walked over to my home for the night, the Le Meridia, across the airport. Connected to the domestic terminal via walkway, the rather modern hotel represents the easy yet pricey choice when connecting in Cairo, providing clean and spacious rooms as well as soundproof windows for a quiet and restful night. My 12.35 departure time allowed for a lazy morning and the delivered in-room breakfast clearly showed Covid precautions to be in full effect. Being so close to the airport certainly has its perks, as the hotel ensures that also travellers with international destinations reach their terminal effortlessly by operating a complimentary shuttle. They even offered to take me in between scheduled rides, so I wouldn't have to wait in the lobby. The transfer came in handy, as I wasn't exactly travelling light and in order to better match Etihad's luggage restrictions, I had purchased a few extra bags at a supermarket the night before. With those, I managed to hit 60 kilos on the spot, which already included an extra 20 kilos of baggage allowance, which I pre-booked online. With that settled, I walked across the duty-free area and straight to the gate. Back at gate E2, I stood waiting for the 787-10 to get ready for boarding. This is a flight that rarely leaves on time, and I'm guessing that most likely this is a result of the high cargo load. The same reason a white body aircraft is flying here in the first place. On a hot summer day like this in mid June, the adjustable tint of the 787's windows helps to keep the cabin cool, and as a result, the windows appear to be blacked out. I chose one of my favorite seats out of the aircraft's one to one configuration number 8K, facing forward and right at the window for maximum privacy. The crew had left the window blinds under passenger's control, so after sitting down, I was free to open the blinds at my discretion. And once I was in my seat, I was immediately offered a selection of welcome drinks, along with a menu, as well as a wellness kit due to Covid. I opted for a glass of fresh orange juice. The cabin today would fill up to about 50% occupancy, and as I boarded early, I could enjoy my welcome drink in peace, while the other passengers slowly came in, stowed their bags and took their seats. So far, the experience was consistent with Etihad's regular service on all of their flights, and I liked that you couldn't tell that this one would only take three hours. After takeoff, Etihad would serve lunch followed by their usual drink service throughout the entire flight. Looking at the menu, here's where you at best can spot a difference compared to longer routes. The fact that they were both a given mezze starter and dessert were almost unanimous on all of Etihad's flights during Covid, so only the Cipriani Bellini turned out to be missing from the menu. Yet that is pretty much splitting hairs. 
In other words, Etihad was pretty much offering the same generous bar selection as on longer flights, as well as four choices for lunch. With all guests on board and all blinds up, it was then time for pushback and to start our journey to Abu Dhabi. Once airborne, I took a closer look at Etihad's wellness kit. Next to a medical face mask, hand sanitizer and plastic gloves, one would find a microfiber snood, which was meant to be a reusable alternative to wearing a face mask during the entirety of the flight. A good thought, especially if your ears will start hurting from supporting your mask after wearing it for hours, or for filling in when wearing a mask properly is very hard. For example, during sleep. Shortly after the fastened seatbelt sign was turned off, my pre-ordered aperitif arrived. A glass of Pieper Heidsig champagne, accompanied by a bowl of warm nuts. I particularly like this ritual. Instead of waiting half an hour for the first service, you get a drink of your choice right away, which of course firstly makes the waiting time for the food fly by, but secondly emphasizes the hospitality that is lived, similar to what a welcome drink does before takeoff. I know that this is actually only a tiny detail, but you get used to it pretty quickly, so that you then immediately notice when this service step is not offered on board other airlines. Consistency is key. Time for lunch. With my choice of food, I was also served another glass of champagne, as well as the Chateau du Zac red wine. Usually, the wine would have been poured tableside, yet the implemented wellness measures at the time asked for that to be done in the galley in order to reduce unnecessary contact between passengers and crew. That's also the reason why all three courses were served together on one tray. I personally don't mind going mix and match, but if one insists on finishing the starter first, one runs at risk of the main course getting cold. Although this clearly is a compromise, food quality on the other hand remained as high as ever. The plates were still arranged piece by piece in the galley, 
something most other airlines reserve for a first-class meal only. The Meze, even though missing Taboli, still was the all-time classic you'd expect, served with Arabic bread. From the four main courses on the menu, I picked the paprika chicken breast, served with mascarpone polenta, pumpkin, asparagus and a sauce of caramelized onions. Not only was the meat juicy and delicious, but also the vegetables were not overcooked. That only works because meat and sides are heated individually and then plated a la minute in the galley and topped with a sauce. A lot of extra effort, especially when the flight time is rather short. There would have been nothing wrong with heating a single plate altogether, but Etihad decided to stay consistent on this occasion as well. Same goes for the wine. The Chateau d'Orzac was a typical Bordeaux and fit the description just fine. Bottom line, I feel like this still is a great meal service just as I'd expect from Etihad, and I'm sure that after the final Covid measures disappear and the little edges are smoothed out, it'll be even better in the future. Thank you very much for, uh, for the service. Yeah, it was, the, the, the meal was actually delicious. It's always hard to get meat right in the air when it's, yeah. to, to get it juicy and uh, it was really good, so better than I expected. Thank you very much. Can I open you to your coffee? I would love a cappuccino. That's great. Awesome. 90 minutes into the flight, it was now time for dessert. Etihad had served a mango cheesecake, and I was in the mood to browse the menu in search of some creamy liquor to add to the mix, alongside the cappuccino. On this sector, however, no ice cubes were available on the plane, and the crew had informed me about this right from the start. I could only guess about the reason, as this was not part of the wellness measures, yet also didn't feel like a one-off thing. As champagne and wine were my first choice anyways, I didn't mind. Yet if I had wanted a long drink, that would have been unfortunate. I went ahead and ordered some Amarula, which would be served ice cold anyways, because the crew proactively kept spirits chilled to counter the lack of ice cubes. While waiting for my drinks, I quickly turned to the IFE yet only to take a look at the in-flight map. On such a short flight, I didn't feel like watching live television or even a movie, yet I definitely would do that on a longer journey, as the modern user interface, as well as the content available, are both exceptional. To me, it's one of the best in the industry, right up there with Katas or X1. Just a few minutes later, both my cappuccino and Amarula arrived. And also here, I often forget just how many other airlines don't offer proper coffee specialties in business class. That's why it's even more commendable that Etihad has the full variety from espresso to lattes ready at any time throughout the flight. Especially a great match with dessert. The cheesecake was fluffy and sweet, and enjoying it with the Amarula was no mistake either. And all left for me to do was to sit back and relax. Yet before we would start our descent, I asked for one more thing. A glass of the Sauterne dessert wine as I had not tried this chateau before. To my surprise, it came in a glass vial. I am familiar with those, as several hotels and companies use it to create single servings of full-sized bottles in order to be able to sell them one glass at a time, yet I did not expect to see those on an aircraft. The, the, the vial in and it will be like decanted and uh, so now that's, that's pretty, that's what beautiful. You can do I'm just taking a guess here but Etihad's decision to purchase the wine in this format may just be brilliant. Compared to white or red wines that are regularly poured during service and therefore have a significant turnaround, a specialty like this gets ordered way less throughout a rotation, which in effect leads to more of it going down the drain at the end of the day. So this actually brings two major advantages. 
an always pristine, always fresh serving for the passenger, as well as an innovative solution for cutting down on food waste. Funny stuff, a Sotown. To get this thick, sweet golden liquid that spikes notes of pineapple and orange zest, understanding nature plays a major role. Only if the ripening grapes are attacked by a so-called noble rot, a certain fungus, the unique aromas develop, leading to the alluring taste of honey and candied apricots, which leaves a minute-long finish. A real gem on Etihad's menu that made me totally forget about the listed port. The Chateau d'Arche was a real surprise, and I'm happy that I went ahead and tried it. A great end to a great flight. I used the final minutes for a bit of rest and took advantage of the life flat seats, as the plane had already left cruising altitude. Before we would touch down, crew members came around and handed out passes for the immigration fast track. These were not really necessary at this time of the year, as travel was not yet in full swing, but they always make for a useful souvenir, as their design hasn't changed throughout the years. This flight today once again showed that Etihad is here to stay, regardless if the challenge faced is called Covid or business. I'm 100% convinced that the airline deserves its place in the world's top 5, regardless of its 4-star Skytrax rating. Even on this 3-hour flight, the gastronomic excellence in both food and beverage well exceeded what's expected in business class, and I feel like the slight imperfections today will fade with rising normality in travel. The crew was polite, always professional, and tried to enhance my experience with their service and suggestions. To me, Etihad will always be the carrier I automatically connect with their first-class apartments on board the A380. I still wanted to return and take over the skies once again, and I'm absolutely certain that I'm not the only one. We indeed ended up parking in the cargo village, which primarily meant one thing, a lengthy bus ride. That added to a little delay, but also meant a complimentary apron tool. Abu Dhabi Airport is fairly easy to navigate. When I reached the baggage belts, my flight number already showed on the screen, and the carousel had started turning. Within minutes, I collected all of my bags and built an impressive pyramid on the luggage card, ready to wheel my belongings to the curb and carry on to my destination. On my way out, I spotted that the arrival duty free still had the 2008 Dom Perignon in stock, so I quickly bought a case and put it on top of the pile. With Etihad's arrivals lounge still closed, I headed straight to the exit, passing the nostalgic memories printed on the hallway walls, leading to the arrivals testing facility. From here, I was cleared for entry in no time and enjoyed breathing the warm evening air as I met my chauffeur outside the airport. Travelling on a qualifying business class fare, Etihad still offers a complimentary chauffeur service to any destination in the UAE, regardless of distance. 
For me, that meant that I could lean back and enjoy the ride towards Dubai, where I would stay for a few nights of vacation. I don't mind the heat during summer. If something's inconvenient, it's the humidity. Yet outside the midday sun, evenings by the beach definitely make a stay worthwhile. I checked in at the wall of Astoria Palm Jumeirah, located right at the end of the outer ring of the world-famous artificial island. Given that the booking was made under Amex's fine hotels and resorts program, as well as the enclosed diamond tier in mind, the hotel generously upgraded my mid-level king room to a large one bedroom suite, ensuring that I'd have a great start to my stay. So now, I would spend my 100th night here, after leaving Luxor on 99. And although they knew I would have to leave early, the team in Luxor still prepared a little surprise for me right before I left. After staying with them several times and also working on a project together, gestures like this make every reunion a special one. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care and bye bye. Okay. 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 Okay.